Welcome back. March is National Colorectal Cancer Awareness Month. So today we will be discussing the importance of screening for this and other cancers that affect people around the country and here in the Bronx. Welcome to the Whole Health Report sponsored by Empire Blue Cross Blue Shield. I'm excited to welcome back Dr. Craig Hirsch, the Chief Medical Officer at Empire, as well as his special guest, Dr. Geraldine McGinty, the Chief Strategy and Contracting Officer and an Associate Professor, professor of Clinical Radiology and Population Science at Whale Cornell Medicine. Welcome, Dr. Hirsch and Dr. McGinty. Thank you so much for joining us. Nice to have you. Hi, Sony. Thanks for having us. Always great having you here, Dr. Hirsch. Um, so before we start, we're discussing colorectal cancer, doctor. Can you share why it's important to raise awareness this month and you know every month, really? Yeah, absolutely. Um, colon cancer screening is vitally important. Now I say that as a, a physician who's, who's ordered a lot of screening tests, but also as someone who's personally uh, experienced screening tests and sees that it can change a life, right? That uh, has impacted my family and has permanently changed the destiny for the better. Uh, so that's sort of the firsthand experience. What I would tell you is that's the experience that we want other people to have too. That's the mission of Empire to materially and measurably improve the lives of all, the health of all New Yorkers. So when it comes to cancer screening, it's not just colorectal cancer we look at. That's what we're gonna focus on today. But there's also other areas like breast cancer, lung cancer, uh, colorectal cancer we mentioned, and cervical cancer. And I'm happy that Dr. McGinty is able to join us today and can give us sort of a, an expert's view of uh, screening for cancers. Absolutely. Yes. Um, I've heard early detection through screening can save lives. And I'm looking forward to hearing more from Dr. McGinty. Uh, first, doctor, can you tell us a little bit about what you do at Whale Cornell Medicine? Thanks so much, Sonia. Yes, so I'm a radiologist and I specialized in, specialize in breast cancer screening and detection, but radiologists also are involved in both lung, uh, lung cancer screening and lung cancer detection, as well as colon cancer screening and detection. So uh, right now I work at Weill Cornell in Manhattan, but actually I started my career at Montefiore and I worked there uh, for many years. It's a place that's very dear to my heart. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you for sharing, Doctor. And can we start um, by explaining what exactly colorectal cancer actually is? It's not as obvious as breast cancer or lung cancer, is it? No, it, it's not. Um, and what, what we're always trying to do with screening is we're trying to pick up these things before you notice them yourself, before they, they cause uh, symptoms or cause anything to, to feel wrong to the patient. We're trying to find disease really early so it's more easily treated or cured. And colon cancer starts in the colon or large intestine. And um, polyps can develop on the lining of the colon or the large intestine. And some of those polyps eventually can go on to become cancerous. So it's important to find them when they're, when they're early. Doctor, what exactly causes those polyps? It's a great question and probably a little bit out of my clinical expertise, but there are many polyps that aren't cancer. Um, as I say, it's just a question of, of finding them and treating the ones that look more suspicious. And, you know, what I've heard also is that African-Americans and Hispanics are especially affected by colorectal cancer. Do we know why this is? Yeah. So listen, there are, there are various risk factors for colon cancer, right? They include genetics, age, obesity, smoking, diabetes, and some other disorders like uh, Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis, which already affect the colon. And like you said, Sonny, there are inequities. Uh, you know, I would say that African-Americans and Lat Latinx probably has about a 20% uh, higher prevalence of getting these conditions and actually a 40% uh, higher chance of dying from these conditions. Uh, as to why, it's not completely clear. Um, part of that is that the risk factor profile is just greater in, the, in those populations historically. Wow, very shocking, um, you know, things that are going on in our community, especially in African American and Hispanic communities here in the Bronx. Um, doctors, who should get screened for colon cancer? Let's say someone is listening right now and they're not sure if they qualify or should be screened. Who should? So the American Cancer Society recommends that you start screening at age 45 or thereabouts. Now that's really for people with average risk. As we know, uh, we tragically lost uh, the great actor Chadwick Boseman last summer and, and he was obviously 
um, you know, very young when he died. So especially if you have a family history of colon cancer or any of the underlying conditions like ulcerative colitis that might make you at higher risk, it's important to talk to your doctor about whether you need to start getting screened earlier or get screened more often. Good news is though that, you know, when we find colon cancer early, it's very treatable. So really, you know, keep in touch with your doctor and certainly look out for any of the symptoms. Yes, um, doctor, I actually wanna emphasize on that. As you said, Chagward Bozeman was very young. He passed away at 43 years old from colorectal cancer. Um, we did mention that colon screening should be done at 45, but um, it is important to get it done sooner than that. Is that what you're saying, doctor? Well, if you, if you are not at average risk, if you know that you're at higher risk, or if you notice any of the symptoms, so any rectal bleeding, um, any change in your, your stools or your bowel movements and anything, um, constipation or diarrhea that, that lasts longer than, you know, you might think of just a viral infection would, would, would last. So again, check with your doctor if you're at all uh, concerned. This is why it's really important to have these awareness um, events as well and um, this segment with Empire Blue Cross Blue Shield. So thank you for that. Um, I read an article recently where a local man actually got tested and found out he had colorectal cancer after he found out about Chadwick Bozeman's case. So just hearing about these cases also inspires folks to get the screening done on time. Um, so thank you both for you know raising awareness and being here with us this month. Um, another thing I wanted to discuss is here in New York, recent immigrants and low income groups and those living in the boroughs outside of Manhattan were significantly less likely to get screened for colorectal cancer. Why do we think that is? Well, you know, some of the symptoms and, and you know, can be a little embarrassing. So, you know, there's that for sure. Um, but I think that one of the things that's been really important in the last year, of course, is the impact of the pandemic. And um, not surprisingly, I think people are maybe a little nervous about coming to see their doctor on site or coming for a test. But what people should know is that we have worked extremely hard to make sure that it's absolutely safe to come to this to the clinic, to the medical center. The last thing we want is anybody missing the care that they need to get because of worries about COVID. We have made we've made it safe. So please do not neglect that. I've also read that there are home tests for colon cancer. Are these also safe and effective? Sure, there are what are called fecal um, occult blood. So they basically you collect your own sample of stool and send it off to the lab. Obviously, though, if that comes back with any abnormality, you'll still need to get a colonoscopy. Got it. Um, and doctor, just an emphasis on what the impact COVID has um, has made on screenings. Um, you know, how have they gone down or increased or anything like that? Sure. Well, um, there's definitely been a significant increase because, of course, we had we had several months last year where we really couldn't have people coming on site for for any kind of elective or routine procedures. But, you know, just in, in my own specialty of breast cancer screening, there was an 87 percent drop in mammography and a 90 percent drop in colonoscopy. So obviously we're really working hard now to catch up. Definitely preventative care is, is the most important thing here. And it's just a reminder, as Dr. McGinty said, it is safe to get tested and it is safe to visit your doctor at this time. Um, so we'll get, we'll get that information over to our viewers at the end. But other than screening, is there anything that we can do to fight cancer? Well, you know, I did want to talk about one other important screening program, which is lung cancer screening. One in seven adults in the Bronx is a smoker. Um, so we know that screening with uh, low dose CT scans or CAT scans of the chest can really um, find lung cancer earlier. So that's another one to talk to your doctor about. But, you know, I think, and, and Craig can certainly weigh in, but, um, you know, having a healthy, balanced diet, getting regular exercise, maintaining a normal weight, obviously quitting smoking. Um, and there are plenty of programs available to, to help you with that minimizing alcohol consumption, then of course, you know, um, maintaining a regular relationship with your doctor. Absolutely. Yes, Dr. Hirsch, did you wanna add on to that? It's, it's never too soon to put in place those lifestyle changes, but obviously the sooner you do it, the better because uh, cancer doesn't grow overnight. Yes, thank you so much, doctors. And um, finally, where can people go to get more information or get help at this time? So listen, for screening, you're really best off starting with your own doctors, your own local hospitals. A lot of hospitals have, have screening programs specifically set up for this. Beyond that, if you want to get additional information, 
Uh, there's three good sources I'd recommend. One is uh, empireblue.com. There's very good information on there about which tests and when to get them. There's also cancer.org, gives you a lot of background information. And 311, the New York City Helpline. Those are what I'd recommend. Thank you, Dr. McGinty and Dr. Hirsch for joining us today. That was some great information. Uh, Dr. Hirsch, we look forward to having you back soon with the whole health report from Empire Blue Cross Blue Shield. My pleasure. Thank you. We're taking a quick break. We'll be right back here on OpenBXRX. <laughs> 